everybody, this is Miss Peachy from your WCA uh, physical science class, and I'm going to go through your alternative roller coaster portfolio. So this is in case you don't have the materials to do the one that's hands-on, and you still want to complete the portfolio, you can do this one that's all interactive, okay? So um, you'll find this worksheet linked on my website if you scroll down underneath all of the stuff that's the hands-on video and the other worksheet if you scroll down underneath there then there's links for the interactive um, alternative roller coaster portfolio so what you're going to be doing here is you're going to be using this website this is the link for the website here right in the worksheet which I have right here for you and it brings up this kind of um, virtual amusement park what you're going to do with this is it defaults to this setup here. You've got initial hill, a loop, and then a final hill. And what you'll see here is, you know, we can start off by can altering the height of each one of these. We can make them all different. We can make the you know, loop really big. You can make the loop really small, and so on and so forth. So we're going to kind of leave this alone here. Don't change it. Don't really be playing with any of the stuff on this side, at least as a part of this portfolio. If you want to play with it independently, that's completely up to you. So going back to your worksheet, what it's asking you is just to complete the following things here. So the first question says, can all the hills on the roller coaster be the same height? If not, why? So that just brings me back to my default situation where both my hills are the same height, but my loop is a different so the loop here we're not talking about, we're just talking about the hills. So go ahead and push play on this to kind of see what happens and see does my roller coaster successfully make it to the end of the track. Does it? That would tell you that they can be the same height. If it doesn't, that would tell you they can't be the same height. And then explain why. I want you guys to think about energy here. Total energy. Remember that the total amount of energy is conserved. So the amount of potential energy at the very beginning um, plus the amount of kinetic energy. So at any point along the track, the amount of potential energy plus the amount of kinetic energy should be exactly the same. So you have to use energy in your explanation for this, okay? Question number two, can the hills get bigger as you move through the track or must they get smaller? So what I want you to do here is I want you to first start off with a situation where you're taking your second hill and you're making it bigger. Is that okay? Why or why not? Or does it need to get smaller? Try both situations and see which one actually works. And then again, explain in terms of energy conservation. Use words like potential and kinetic energy in your answers. Does the steepness of the hill affect the coaster's ability to finish the track? So look at those hills. I mean, does the height, is height only the consideration? Or if height is taken into consideration, does steepness matter too? Is it better to be steep or not as steep? Which one do you think? And then question five, if the speed of the coaster is set too high when it goes over the crest of a hill, what happens and why? So when you go here, you can change the speed here using this slider. So if I change the speed, what happens if the speed is too high? Experiment with this in multiple situations. Try to get a, a feel for what's happening here. Why does the height of the second hill affect the ability of the coaster to go safely around the loop? Okay, so that's a curious statement. So if I keep playing this and I keep changing the, side, the height of that second hill from little to big, how does that affect the coaster's ability to safely go around the loop? Think about it. Will it safely go around the loop in this situation? In this situation? Does it have an effect on it at all? The height of the second hill we're talking about here. How do the heights of the first and second hill cause the coaster to either not get around the loop or crash through the loop? Now you're experimenting with both hills. You're playing with, okay, should I make a, a really tall first hill and a really short second hill? Should I make a really tall first hill and a really tall second hill? 
a tall first hill and a medium second hill? Maybe I should try with a medium first hill and a tall second hill. A medium first hill and a short. How is this affecting the coaster's ability to safely go around the loop? Remember, sometimes what happens is disaster. Oh. oh, no, that wasn't the loop situation. That wasn't safely traversing the second hill. But sometimes the coaster would fly around the track. Question eight. What provides resistance on the roller coaster causing the car to slow down? Okay. So what provides resistance? And again, in this situation, you're going to be adjusting this slider right here, right? You can adjust this slider. Think about that in real life. And finally, manipulate the track. You need to come up with a situation where the car stays on the track the whole time without falling off. You get a speed between 60 and 63 and a time of around 45 seconds. Once you get this, okay, I want you to take a screenshot of your track with those um, specifications. So you get it all set up and tell, show me a screenshot of it to show me that your car has successfully completed the course and make sure to attach. You can copy and paste that screenshot right into your document and save it so that I have the screenshot as well. Okay, so hopefully that all made sense to you guys. That's an alternative to doing the hands-on portfolio. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know and I'll be happy to help you out. My extension is 2204 and um, or you can send me a webmail message.